You're still listening to Kumbang Channel and this is KT News. Outgoing Consul General of the Republic of Indonesia to Hong Kong and Macau, Tri Tariat, is set to leave on May the 1st for his new post as the new Indonesian ambassador in Kuwait, unfortunately leaving some of his unfinished efforts for the welfare of over 5,000 Indonesian migrant workers in Macau to his successor, particularly his wish of seeing foreign domestic workers receiving an ideal monthly salary of 6,000 patakas. Tariat made the remarks in a media dinner with several local media representatives at Macau Tower last night, stressing that the career diplomat, whose previous placements include Paris, New York and Nairobi, however, believed that the new Indonesian Consul General accredited to the two SARs would continue to push for migrant workers' protection and minimum wage in Macau. Since being placed in the Hong Kong consulate some two years ago, he has tried to lobby Macau government regarding the setting of minimum wage for foreign domestic workers. However, until now, there is still no progress about it. Ideally, 6,000 patakas, and this includes housing and food allowances, Tariat said when asked about how much salary he thought the foreign domestic workers in Macau should receive. Currently, the minimum wage for foreign domestic workers in Hong Kong is set at 4,520 Hong Kong dollars per month, while in Macau there is only the so-called indicative minimum wage of 2,500 patakas per month for domestic workers, excluding the housing allowance. Most domestic workers in Macau do not live in their employer's place. They usually share a rented flat elsewhere or they rent a bed space in one of Macau's many informal migrant boarding houses. This practice is known among the domestic workers as stay out. In Hong Kong, on the other hand, legally, all domestic workers must stay in their employer's house or flat, although some can be found discreetly lodging somewhere else due to their employer's place being too small to accommodate them. Apart from the minimum wage, Tariat has also been lobbying the local government to follow in Hong Kong's footsteps in establishing an official standardized procedure for work placement for Indonesian domestic workers, where any Indonesian citizen looking to work as a domestic worker in Hong Kong must first join one of the government accredited training centers in Indonesia, known to the Indonesians as PT. During the trainings, they are taught various skills, including in Cantonese language. This effort also hasn't been successful. Since my first day of arrival until today, there has been no progress, unfortunately. The employment agencies, of course, they are there, but we do not have anything to impose on them in Macau, legally speaking, making it difficult to protect the Indonesian domestic workers in town, he said, before adding, in our system, it is perceived that those coming to Macau for work are legal workers. They come here through a non-procedural process. We call them non-procedural workers, but of course, they are here legally noting that many of them enter Macau on a tourist visa before converting their immigration status once they get a job. Despite leaving his current post with some homework for the next Consul General, who is yet to be announced by the Indonesian government, Tariat is 100% sure that the next one leading the Indonesian Consulate in Hong Kong will continue his legacy. Some of the breakthroughs that Tariat has made during his tenure in Hong Kong and Macau include cutting the lengthy process of passport extension for Indonesian citizens in Hong Kong and Macau from 15 days to just 3 days, establishing closer relationship with various local Indonesian organizations and communities, as well as hosting medical checkups for Indonesians in Hong Kong and Macau. He even helped to establish an Indonesian health group in Hong Kong called Paduli Sehat, in addition, he has done some groundworks that will lead to more Indonesian students taking up hospitality courses or doing exchange studies and internships in Macau. And eventually, I'd like to see more Indonesian skilled workers working in hospitality industry in Macau, Tariat was quick to add. Reportedly, many Indonesians in Macau are currently worried about the next top diplomat in the Indonesian consulate in Hong Kong as most see Tariat as one of the best Indonesian consul generals placed in the region so far. He was adamant, I believe I have built a system. The system should work, no matter who would eventually replace him. As for himself and his new job, he is keen on pushing more skilled workers from Indonesia to Kuwait, as well as introducing more about Indonesian Islamic culture, which, according to him, is a mixture of religious as well as traditional rituals and arts in the Middle East. Apart from the migrant workers in Macau who hold work permits called the Blue Cards, there are around 300 Indonesian citizens who hold Macau permanent ID card. In addition, 
there are several thousand Chinese Indonesians who are locally known as Yane Waku, most of who are either Chinese or Portuguese citizens, having already lost their Indonesian citizenship many years before. Medical staff, infants, and those who look after infants under the age of one could get vaccinated against measles starting Wednesday in Macau, Asia Times reported. As the first batch of 5,400 doses of measles, mumps, and rubella MMR vaccines that Macau's Health Bureau ordered arrived on Tuesday night, the authority opened up the Japs' quarter to domestic workers who need to take care of infants under age of one, according to a report by the Macau Daily News. The Macau government had placed an emergency order of 15,000 doses of MMR vaccines last week. The Health Bureau said families with an infant aged under one at home could register up to three members for the vaccine. The caregivers who were born in or after 1970 and had not received a measles vaccination could go online, call or go to health centres to register. After registration, they also needed to be assessed by medical personnel. Only those who meet the requirements will receive the vaccines. And for some flash news around Macau. Macau's former weather chief has won an appeal against his dismissal in the wake of deadly super typhoon Hato, which hit the city on August the 23rd, 2017. The ruling by the Court of Second Instance was first reported by TDM's Portuguese language channel on Thursday. The Radio Macau report did not say when the court accepted the appeal. Secretary for Transport and Public Works Raimundo do Rosario said Thursday that he will consider retiring from the government after the current term for the government ends in December. The local government will change on December 20, 2019, marking the 20th anniversary of the establishment of the Macau Special Administrative Region. Rosario took office as the Secretary for Transport and Public Works on December 20, 2014. Hualien County Government Tourism Department Director Tang Yu Shu said earlier this week that the Eastern Taiwanese County planned to launch regular direct flights between Hualien and Macau before the end of August, with the aim of increasing the number of tourists from Macau by 20%. Tang made the remarks in a tourism promotion conference held by the Hualien County Government at Ponte 16 Resort on Wednesday, which was attended by nearly 40 representatives from Hualien and the local tourism industry. And for the local weather, it's going to be misty tomorrow with a local temperature ranging from 23 to 28 degrees Celsius. Rain is expected on Thursday as well as the rest of the days towards the weekend, with the local temperature throughout the week predicted to be between 20 and 24 degrees at the lowest and from 24 to 29 degrees the highest. For more information about the local weather, visit www.smg.gov.mo. And that's all for tonight's KT News. Getting back to our music, this is Dummy Im with Sound of Silence. Continue to listen to Kumbang Channel. Kumbang, Kumpel Barang Yoke.